Hello, Jairo Bustamante. I'm a film director from Guatemala. I have a film in the Berlinale, Temblores is the name of the film, Tremors. You are welcome to see it. Please make a lot of trips in movie theaters and a lot of vacation for your mind and nutrition for your mind when cinema. Hijo, ¿por qué no lo negó? ¿Por qué no me preguntó qué decir? ¿Sabe qué, mijo? Salga ahorita mismo y vaya a negarlo todo. Nieguelo todo. Todavía se pueden arreglar las cosas, créame. No me vaya a decir que no sabe mentir. Es solo mientras usted ordena las cosas. Después el tiempo lo va a ir arreglando todo. Peínese. Sabe que, amigo, esto no es amor. Lo único importante es conservar a la familia porque con ellos usted va a poder envejecer tranquilamente. No piense solo en su felicidad, sino en la felicidad que usted le puede dar a los demás. Hello and welcome to the 33rd Teddy Award. I'm Hannah Congdon and I'm here with director Jairo Bustamante to talk about his film Temblores. Hi and welcome to the Berlin Hi, Manor. thank you. It's lovely to have you here. Very happy, very happy. It's my third time in Berlin. Yeah. With two times with a film. Uh, so it's so nice to come back and show to the world Tim Blood is here. Yeah, my first question was actually going to be a bit in relation to that. That um, I think last time you were at the Berlinale was with Ishkno, um, and that film is set in this village on the edge of a volcano. So Blores is set in the city, but also with this threat of earthquake. How have you developed from one theme onto the next? I, I think, you know, history that can be very songs be very used for a lot of people but but really histories came from me and and i could feel in temblores and in ishkanu the same line the, 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 the there is character looking for freedom fighting for rights and they are involved in a very close society and they cannot uh, access to this freedom so i think Ishkanul and Temblores have this, this same, same line uh, in, in the main characters mm. uh, look for and developing. Is there a particular reason that you chose in both instances to have this almost threat of natural disaster? So you have the volcano in one and the earthquake in the other? Do you know Guatemala is a very, very um, fantastic country in this kind of things because we have 33 volcanoes, there is temblores all the time, there we are in the Caribbean uh, with two big ocean, oceans in the two parts of the country, we are so small like that and mm. so nature is very present and it's a country who film, uh, who make me feel how small I am all the time so I think this inspiration of the titles come from that. Yeah. And for Temblores, for Ishkanul, it was very, very um, easy because Ishkanul means, vol means volcano in my own language. And normally you pronounce that Ishkanul, but I wanted to, to call it Ishkanul because Ish is, is, is the f uh, feminine prefix. So it's she volcano, mm. uh, it's the female volcano. So. And for Temblores, to me, it was very important to talk about this society who, who pushed you to build your life uh, on, a, on a lie. And uh, when you are not honest with yourself and you, you build something just to be accepted for the others, in a moment, all this construction will be destroyed. And Temblor is a very nice... Um, it's a very nice way to destroy this kind of life, construct, uh, build in 
in our life. Yeah. And obviously the church plays a huge role in the film and there is one scene where uh, I think the, the pastor says that you know, the church's love is kind. Um, and yet for the entire film, the church's love is, is the opposite. It's incredibly cruel. So how can there be that level of delusion about the work that the church is doing? Uh, Guatemala is a very religious country. All 90, 98 or 99 percent of people are religions. Uh, but the problem is, I, I, I understand the need to believe in something and I understand uh, fight and all that, but the problem is when, when church became a rule and uh, to be part of the church you have to follow these rules. Uh, and there is a lot of church in Guatemala uh, um, saying that we are not in this, in this world to be happy. We are in this world to, be, to, to follow the rules. And, and that is so castrativo. What do you say that? Okay, uh, catastrophic. The, uh, Catastrophic, but when that can be castrate somebody. Oh, it can it kind of block someone. Exactly. Castrador es cuando le cortan los huevos a alguien, cuando no dejan que siga viviendo, que siga reproduciendo. Okay. And the entire film is incredibly beautiful, but all of the people inside the film, like all of the actors are, are stunning. And there's one scene where um, Pablo's wife is, is kind of stood before the mirror and she's trying to do her hair and everything. It's like she thinks that beauty will somehow hide the fact that her husband is gay or the fact that there's all this stuff going on underneath society. Why that focus on beauty? Why is that such an important thing in this culture? I, I really wanted to make a very classic film and use the 70s uh, uh, Jewish aesthetic. Mm. And I had a lot of inspiration from Japanese film and American film from the mm. 70s. And I wanted to do that without being scary about uh, if aesthetic is good or not. And and I wanted to, to, to show this society that people build all this beauty uh, in a bubble and at the end they are uh, in, a, in a prison. Mm. Yeah. But the, you, you talk about the actors and there is very, a very nice thing with the actors in Guatemala because we don't have really a school for cinema actors, for movie actors. So um, I took some people who never act before and some people who act uh, in theater or, or in another kind of, of movies and, and we made a formation for four months and almost a year for, with others and, and I'm very happy because they really get to acting and they really made a very good work. Out of interest, which, which actors then had previously worked in film and which hadn't? Uh, which characters? Juan Pablo, the, mm -hmm. the main character, uh, yeah. Pablo, was an actor, is an actor, and there is two more in the film, and the others are the first time. Okay. That's interesting, because you, you can't tell at all, really. No, that, I mean, the first time in movies, mm. there there is a lot of actors coming from theatre. Mm. Yeah. And in the film we see these two different worlds almost. So Pablo's kind of middle class family world where everything is very perfect and all the shots are quite symmetrical. Uh, and then we shift to this world of Francisco where everything is a bit freer and looser and there are more colours. And do you think Pablo ever feels entirely at home in either of those worlds? No, I think Pablo can be at home in any place because he's not in his own body, he's not in, in, in his own life, so he's looking for. And, and there is another uh, social uh, phenomenon in Guatemala that is men are very, um, what do you say that in English, they are uh, all the time protect by society, by women, mm. and men needs people doing things for them. 
and, and I think Pablo is like that. Pablo had a very nice house that is a, is a made all the things in the house to, to make that work. Mm. And after that, he, he, he was with Francisco, and Francisco, if, if the film continues in this, in this life, I'm sure that Francisco will be the, the new Isa doing all for Pablo because... Protecting him. Protecting almost, him and, and serving. Serving. Men in Guatemala look for serve, for be served. Mm. That's okay, that's interesting. Even, even then within a, a homosexual relationship between two men, you think there's still that element of servitude? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I'm talking about uh, men in Guatemala who live in a very much smooth way, and there is the 90%. Mm. So. Yeah, because there's, there's also uh, quite a funny scene at the beginning where um, we're introduced to the gay club, uh, and Pablo is the only one there in a suit. Everyone else is wearing completely different clothes, and he does look really out of place. Um, and I, I also wondered if you were trying to do something with the clothes, and in, if they were symbolic in some way. Yeah, and, and you know, Guatemala City is a city with uh, very small places like uh, made for for walk or made for live uh, outside. Mm. Normally, it's a it's a it's a city built with suburbs mm. and bubbles and doors and guards and so Pablo live in this little. A small place when people can go to the to the market, walk on the street, and live a normal life. But for Guatemalan people, for middle class or, or high class, that is not very well. They want to live in a in a protect world. Yeah. One of the things I found quite interesting in the film is that it's so often the women that are are enforcing almost this this patriarchal society under which they also suffer so why do you think women do that you know i think it's it's a very machiavellic strategy that men um, impose to women in the past history and now the, the guardian of of machismo they're the women's they are pushing men to be men because they want to be women and there is not a mix in these two in these roles and I think in a country like Guatemala when women don't have any opportunities when they can just show that they are doing something well to be accepted by men there is a kind of happiness there I think but it's very, you know, Temblores is not talking about homosexuality at the end. I, I don't looking for that. I'm, I'm talking about oppression. Uh, because and so Guatemala. many of the characters are suffering exactly. under the same kind of oppression. Exactly. And in Guatemala, it's very common if you make a coming out, your your relatives or your friends or your priest or your psychologue will. Uh, push you to find, when you are a, a, a man gay, push you to find a, a woman to marry her and to be protected by the cover. But nobody th uh, think about woman happiness or not. Yeah. It's just men important in society. Yeah. And there are a couple of really beautiful moments in the film where it seems like Pablo's brother actually understands almost what he's going through. Did you see him as, a, as an ally or even as gay himself? Uh, to me, uh, Luis, the, the brother, is a very important character, so thank you to, to remark it, because to me he's the only one who can understand that happens and he doesn't care about. Mm -hmm. He just loves his brother and, and he's more open, but in a society like the society where they live, uh, he can be open about his feeling or he just follow the others. And, and there is a lot of people in, in my country, open people, and people who don't have any problem with minorities or different people or women rights or homosexual rights or anything, but they don't do anything because they don't want to be different. Guatemala is a country of all the people want to be 
in the package all the people want to be in, in the same thing because mm. if you are different there is problems mm. you know we, we we live a very catastrophic war civil war in Guatemala and when you were different you could, you could be killed so mm. we are afraid and that final scene uh, the daughter sort of has this this lingering eye contact with her dad and it seems like she understands something I, w I wondered what you why did you want to finish on that particular scene uh, I think the, the new generation can be the, the hope so for me this this little girl is the is who understand and who she can judge he will not judge his father but I think she understand the suffering she understand that and she's not, I, th I think she's the hope of the, the only hope of the film. Thank you so much for Thank talking you. to us today. And it's, it's your premiere this evening, so massive good luck for that. Thank you so much. Yeah. See you there.